Wildlife guide Ailton Lara has been hunting jaguars in the Pantanal for 15 years with his camera. Seeing one never gets old. It's very hard to describe because every time you see the jaguar, it's like different. So it's a very good emotion. Like when you see it, it seems like your body changed the frequency. And when you see it, you never know how you're going to feel. You just feel happy about finding them. Happy because they're so elusive and crucial to life here. They play an important role in conservation by controlling and stabilizing the ecosystem. For example, if you get too many capybaras, the jaguars will be here to control the number of capybaras. So the capybara is the biggest rodent in the world, but they are nice ones, so we love them. So the jaguars are also eating caimans. So they control the number of the caimans, so it keeps the nature in a balance. But nature in this protected park near Porto Jofre is being thrown off balance. To blame, cattle grazing, deforestation, human development in general, and massive record-breaking fires, like those extinguished only months ago. Since when the fire started until today, we have not seen any dead jaguars but we have seen many jaguars with their burned paws. So some of the jaguars were rescued for treatment and one of them came back, was released in the same place where it was rescued before. The fire probably killed a lot of uh, baby jaguars, the ones that are very vulnerable. But a lot of the jaguars, uh, we're impressed with the number of jaguars we have seen after the fire. Maybe because they like this forest along the river. Like it or depend on it. This is one of the few green belts left in this part of the Pantanal. The jaguars were driven here, along with other animals fleeing the flames. situações aterrorizantes mesmo, sabe, de animais é, carbonizados que morreram né, com o pescoço esticado naquela tentativa de fuga do fogo, na tentativa de respirar. Os primeiros dias que a gente estava aqui, né, a gente ficou aqui 43 dias, a fumaça, a gente não conseguia enxergar um metro de distância, o calor era insuportável, né, todo mundo tendo que fazer nebulização, os olhos muito irritados, a gente começava a trabalhar às 5 horas da manhã, não tinha hora para parar, parava meia-noite, uma hora da manhã. Cadê falta a lua? Around Porto Jofre, fires consumed 86% of the vegetation. Millions of animals, wild and domestic, perished. Volunteer veterinarians like Carla Sassi came from around the country to try to help. This buffalo, the beloved mascot of a poor farmer named Silas dos Santos, was one of countless victims. Esse é o pirata, né? O animal aqui de Socilas, e ele escapou do fogo, mas infelizmente os cascos, né, ficaram bem prejudicados. Tá tendo descolamento de casco, né? Ele já ficou com bastante ferida aqui pelo tempo que ele ficou deitado. E é um tratamento bem complexo, né? Quando o fogo chegou, circulou. Aí eles foram só passando por cima do fogo e onde foram queimando. E é como aconteceu o pirata, né? Que queimou as patas. E outros animais também que queimou, né? Bicho. É. Tem tudo quanto é bicho que tem aqui, é veado, é. Até a onça queimou, né? Vets across the Pantanal desperately perform triage on thousands of animals, from snakes to birds to caiman, even if, in cases like pirates, all they could do was relieve the creature's suffering. Rains eventually put out last year's fires, but barely. One of the driest rainy seasons on record has just come to an end. Day after day, the skies threaten, but do not open. Mm -hmm. 
Normally skirting these rickety bridges is impossible at this point in the spring. The Pantanal should be flooded. Sassi, the vet, has come back with her team. She's worried that the dry conditions will make this year's fires even worse than last year's. Pantanal, eles traziam a sensação de que a gente estava num cemitério a céu aberto. Eram muitos animais, muitos. Tamanduá, antas, macacos, é, répteis, né? diversos répteis, anfíbios. Então era realmente a sensação de estar num cemitério a céu aberto. Nesse local aqui funcionava a base de atendimento dos animais resgatados. Né? Então eles eram resgatados, muitas vezes a gente fazia os primeiros atendimentos no local do resgate, trazia para cá. O atendimento era continuado e, após a estabilização do animal, ele era encaminhado para outros locais, principalmente para a Universidade é, Federal, né, em Cuiabá. Um pequeno pedaço de mata ainda ficou intacto. Né? Então, enquanto a gente estava aqui preparando a alimentação, fazendo reunião, várias espécies é, se aproximavam aqui. Mesmo sendo um material estranho para os animais, eles entenderam que era a única fonte de água naquele momento. Então eles se aproximavam mesmo para poder beber água, para matar a sede, para garantir a sobrevivência. E ao longo de toda a Transpantaneira foram cerca de 50 pontos de água, coxos artificiais grandes, né, maiores, instalados, e mais de 80 pontos de alimentação. Ver esse lugar vazio aqui hoje dá uma sensação assim até de certo abandono, porque a gente imaginava que aqui continuaria sendo uma base, porque tem vários outros problemas aqui né, com os animais silvestres. Se uma situação semelhante vier a acontecer, provavelmente aqui vai ter que ser reusado, né? vai ter que ser é, montada toda essa estrutura aqui novamente. Mas a gente está terminando um período de chuva, mas as chuvas não foram suficientes. A gente vai ver ao longo da Transpantaneira os locais que deveriam estar tá já tomados de água, a vegetação já está florescendo, mas está seco. Sassi is on her way to Ailton Lara's camp to help him assess just how many jaguars survived the 2020 fires and the threat that the next round of fires could pose. According to experts in the region, the outlook is bleak. Some of those experts are holed up at a remote private reserve called Sesc, the Pantanal's largest. Getting there isn't easy. For people, that is. It takes a day in boats and on quads. Last year's fires got there faster. Researchers did all they could just to save their base of operations from the flames. Dá, dá de ver mais ou menos que bem por aqui assim, ó. Ela tem diferença de cor, então deveria a água estar tá nesse mês aqui, estar tá nessa fundura aqui. Droughts are cyclical in the region, but the Sesc researchers say they've never seen anything like last year's dry conditions. Mas nada se compara ao que a gente viveu em 2020, acho que foi realmente sem nenhum precedente aqui na, na reserva. Então as, os incêndios são muito marcantes na, na nossa história aqui. A gente... Foram 93% dela foram atingidos pelos incêndios. Então são 108 mil hectares, 100 mil hectares foi atingido pelos incêndios em 2020, nos meses de agosto e setembro. There have always been fires in the Pantanal, but no one saw this level of devastation coming. If they can figure out why it happened, they might be able to stop it from happening again. It seems there isn't just one culprit, but several. Climate change is one of them. Set in motion by man and more and more out of his control. As chuvas aqui do Pantanal, depois no centro do Brasil, depende da umidade produzida no Atlântico Norte. 
Então, essa umidade do Atlântico Norte vem para a Amazônia e desce para formar as chuvas aqui do Pantanal, depois vai para o Brasil Central. That humidity is disappearing as average global temperatures rise. The Amazon jungle is shrinking. It's being felled for lumber, burned for farming and grazing. The water tap for the Pantanal is effectively being turned off with each tree that's destroyed. The trees absorb the water from the ground and it releases it through the air, through the leaves of the trees. And all this humidity becomes like um, a cloud, it becomes like a flying river. So this flying river will bring rain to the rest of the South America and the Pantanal included. Whenever you cut down a tree in the Amazon, that means you get less water in the rest of the South America. Because they destroyed a lot of the Amazon, the Pantanal is being affected directly. So we are getting big droughts and we're getting the fires here. So we are losing our nature, we're losing all our animals because people are not respecting nature. But the rate of Amazon clearing only accelerates. The current government in Brazil has encouraged logging, clearing, and ranching in the rainforest. Human activity is on the rise in the Pantanal as well. 95% of this wetland is in private hands, and where there's man, there's fire. Virtually all of the blazes that ravage this region are man-made. O fogo é um dos principais instrumentos, uma das principais ferramentas de uso, de manejo de áreas, não só no Pantanal, mas no Brasil todo, nas áreas rurais. O, o uso do fogo ele é muito ligado à cultura mesmo, mas ele também ele pode ter uma origem acidental, ele pode ser não intencional quando o fogo é utilizado para manejo de áreas sem os devidos cuidados, numa estação muito seca, muito extrema de seca, ou ele pode ser criminoso. criminal as when ranchers burned forests to create pasture. Inside the protected reserves, burning land is strictly forbidden. The laws are better enforced. But that's making life for residents harder. The more pristine and lush their surroundings, the more fuel there is for fires. Então, chegava naquela época do incêndio do fogo, aquela área dele estava tudo queimado já, já estava tudo. Quando se deu fogo, já era difícil encostar, né? Nós mesmo aqui, nós tínhamos roça, tudo era bem mais afastado. O fogo podia vir, mas não tinha problema de ir na casa, porque nós tínhamos roça aqui, tinha cana, mas com o tempo para cá, a lei o... Não obrigou nós mais fazer derrubar para plantar, tem que proteger a mata, a floresta, então. Então, esse daí, eu larguemos de tudo. Nós, nós plantamos só aqui mesmo, como você está vendo, tem roda limpinha aqui, né? Aqui nós plantamos a mandioca ali na praia também. Aqui não é para nós sobreviver. Então, nós não podemos de matar a mata. Marcelino is a subsistence fisherman living with his family upriver from Porto Jofre. The only thing that he could do as last year's fires came ripping through the woods was move some of his belongings onto boats and douse his roof with water. Still, Marcelino is luckier than some of his neighbors. He has a solar-powered water pump that lets him keep water at the ready. It was a gift from Ailton Lara, the Jaguar guide. Lara and Carla Sassi, the vet, scour the riverbanks for jaguars. 
There's plenty to see, but so far, no big cats. Just some paw prints, but Lara won't give up. The jaguars are more than just the alpha predator in the Pantanal food chain. They're also the engine of the local economy. Without them, fewer tourists would come. Ecotourism became one of the major and important tool to conservation of nature here. Because people, when they get benefit from ecotourism, so they start protecting animals because that's where the money comes from. So that happens with everything, right? Same way. And we are here to protect the animals, to protect nature and protect us. We are the eyes of the park. Without a sighting, Lara and Sasi set camera traps for remote monitoring and call it a day, or nearly. Carla Sassi has another couple of stops to make. Carla and vets at the University of Cuiabá saved hundreds of animals in 2020. Among them, a buffalo all but condemned to die. Iron, the badly burned farmer's pet, has been recovering here since September. Tonight, Carla's taking him home. Estou limpando porque e aí evita de cobra, a ver se curi mesmo, né? Pegar algum aqui. Então a gente tem que sempre estar tá limpando. O pirata também, porque o pirata aqui é que é o, o banheiro dele, tem uma banha, né? Farmer Silas dos Santos found Pirate as a baby wandering alone. He bottle fed him back to health. Today's homecoming is a surprise. Dos Santos is a man of few words, but between man and beast, there's great affection. For Carla Sassi, it's a small win. It's what keeps her going, even as she worries about worsening fires. To the casual observer, the Pantanal might seem like pirate, recovered from last year's scorching. When the fire was like burning so intense here, this was like just ashes and smoke. But right now, looking from above, you see this very green vegetation, very beautiful. But if you look at close, you see a dead tree still, but uh, the vines covered because the vines grow really fast and it covers the, the trees, like it becomes like a sort of a canopy. So it gives a false impression that Pantanal has recovered from the forest fire. The Pantanal remains a vulnerable tinderbox. The creepers hiding this also hide the jaguars from view. But like Carla Sassi, Lara has learned not to give up and to count his victories one animal at a time. 
Today that animal has a name, Jeru. We finally got to see a jaguar. I know him by his pattern marks. So Jeru, we know him for quite a few years and it's a very strong cat. We specialize on catching caimans. The jaguar can jump from the bank onto the caiman and gives a powerful bite on the back of the head of the caiman. Just one bite and then the caiman is gone. This is it, the everything moment. What Lara lives for. The hope, the resilience, and the majesty of the Pantanal embodied in this great cat. Sleeping off a kill along the banks of a river under threat. This is uh, our hope. And we really need to take care of nature because we almost lost the Pantanal. I say almost lost because the Pantanal almost lost its balance. Once the Pantanal loses its balance, and then it's gone. I hope people change their minds and be nice to nature, and then everything's gonna be alright again. There is still time, and there is still hope.